Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, as always, we love to give all praise, honor, glory to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh. We do so in the name of His only, of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ. It's your brother Nakawan. Brother Waldo is on. All right, and we back at you with another lesson. In this video, we're going to go into World War One. Which World War One was prophesied in the Bible. World War One, World War Two, and World War Three. It's prophesied in the Bible. Right, and this give precedence or let you know that the Bible is emphatically real. All right. Ain't no World War One prophesied in the damn Quran or the book of the dead, but the Holy Bible. And when we go through Revelation, the ninth chapter, which World War One is the fifth trumpet, by the way, when we go through it and we give you the visual of what John the Revelator was writing down when he received this vision on the island of Patmos, you will see that um, the Bible or the scriptures just come into life, right? So the brother is going to start at Revelation, the ninth chapter and the first verse, and hopefully you brothers and sisters are edified. Okay. It's the book of Revelation, chapter nine, verse one. It says, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto yes. the earth. Mm -hmm. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Right. So it says, John said that he saw a star falling from heaven. Now, when you deal with a star falling from heaven, that's talking about a ruler, a ruler coming from his highest state to a lower state, right? Nations or rulers losing power, right? For example, let's go ahead and get this real quick. Lamentations. Yep, Lamentations chapter two, and let's, and let's read verse one. God, uh, Lamentations two, verse one. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto earth the beauty of Israel? Mm -hmm. And remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. See that? So it says here in the book of Lamentations, right? Which, when you, which, if you know about the book of Lamentations, this was written by the prophet Jeremiah, right? And the book, the whole book of Lamentations is Jeremiah lamenting for the downfall of the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Because what happened? We had the Babylonians come and, and completely destroyed us, right? Besieged our city, destroyed, destroyed our temple with the help of the Edomites, right? So when it says that the Lord cast down from heaven unto earth the beauty of Israel, that's talking about the Most High uprooting us out of our land, right? That's talking about the Heavenly Father putting us into slavery, right? Because was Israel literally up there in, in heaven, in the sky? No. That heaven, that's talking about being in our land, Right. Because when you read the Bible, depending on the context, heaven can be rulership, a condition, or it could be, you know, the sky with a cloud, the sun and the moon and the moon is at, or it could be dealing with the spiritual realm. OK, so that's what this is talking about. So when it says in the book of Revelation, chapter nine, where it says a star falling from heaven. That's talking about the last monarch of Europe, right? The last emperor of Europe, and that last that last monarch of Europe is, is talking about Kaiser Wilhelm II, right? When she was the last king of Prussia, P R U S S I A, right? This is this guy right here. Matter of fact, open up the tab. Kaiser Wilhelm II. All right, this guy. See that? Kaiser Wilhelm II, as it says right here, was the last was the last German emperor and king of Prussia. So that's who that star is. Right? Because again, we read the Bible as well. Stars, people or men can be likened unto stars. Right? You hear it all the time with our people, right? I'm a star. I'm a star of this. I'm a star of that. Right. Huh. Yeah. So stars. So so stars can be likened unto people. You have something, brother? 
Uh, yeah, like you know, you got movie stars, all stars, right. superstars. Right. Um, grab that preset where it says your house shot is the uh bright and morning star. Con. I think that's like revelation. Con. This is uh Revelation 22 and uh 16. Con, bring it out. That's con, red letter it says. I, Yahweh Shai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. See that? And the bright and morning star. See that? So we see Yahweh Shai calling, calling himself the morning star. Why is that? Because Yahweh Shai, he's going to come back and he's going to be the top guy on the earth. Okay? He's going to be the man. He's going, he's going, to, be, that, he's going to be that beaker of light on the earth so that's why he's calling himself a star showing you that people mankind can be likened unto unto stars Precept. Con, go ahead bro Con, numbers 24 and 17 <clears throat> it says i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not nigh there shall come a star out of jacob and his scepter shall rise out of israel it you says, Khan, you know, we see this as a, a prophecy in the Old Testament talking about who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai. Just to finish the verse, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. So we know that didn't happen yet. But the point, you know, this is Christ being that star that comes out of Jacob. Beautiful, beautiful. See that? So another precept, another precept showing you that men can be likened unto star. And like we said earlier, we see that all the time, right? You hear our people when they're rapping their music or when they're singing their songs, or whatnot. They are referring to themselves as stars, right? Which, which this is how you know that the Bible is written by our people because this is slang right here. Yeah, well, yeah I see the star from, <laughs> see the star from from heaven. That's the same language that we utilize today, referring to people as stars, all right? So again, so that star falling from heaven, that's talking about Kaiser Wilhelm II, and that's talking about him coming out of rulership, okay? He was the last monarch, the last emperor of Europe. And it also says, and to him it was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, what is that bottomless pit? That bottomless pit is in reference to Europe, okay? Europe is the bottomless pit. And the reason why Europe is referenced is referenced to that is because they are depleted of natural resources, right? There's not a there's not a there's not a lot of natural resources, right? They have to import a lot of natural resources, which this is a map of Africa, and this is why the so-called white man had to rape, rob, and pillage the earth. Look at this. Africa has all these natural resources. They have everything. But when you take a look, <laughs> when you go ahead and take a look of Europe, sorry. Let's see. I don't know why I did that. Matter of fact, I have some. All right, here we go. Boom. So let me just zoom in on this. When you go ahead and take a take a good look on a map of Europe, they barely have anything. They barely have anything but just natural gas. I mean, they have some natural resources, but it is but it's not but it's not plentiful like Africa or or like Asia. Or like a America, prior to prior to the Europeans com coming over here to America and colonizing it and destroying it, America was America was beautiful. Matter of fact, you read in the Book of Kings, America is referenced to the land of Ophir, and King Solomon he used to send his navy, which were Canaanites, over here to the Americas. Of course, before. America was referenced to America. Like I said, the scriptures reference it to the land of, as the land of Ophir. 
I felt. Let me go ahead and get it. Um, and and, I may. Oh, oh yeah, come bro. Go ahead. And I was just gonna say, um, and, that, and that's where you get the um, the old mix, right? Mm hmm. Like them old statues of uh, you know what looks like so called black people. You could tell by the noses and stuff, but they not Israelites. You know they right. Don't. Absolutely, absolutely, right. So there are four parts of the earth, right? You have Africa, Asia, Europe, and the fourth part is dealing with America, right? And we're gonna read it here in Revelation chapter six, verse eight. Go ahead, Ot. This is Revelation six, verse eight. It says, "And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him." Yeah, right, right. Who's this pale horse? This pale horse is. It's talking about Esau, so called white man. It says, it says, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. Hell is talking about the grave. Why is that? Because anywhere the so called white man goes is death, right? Just let's just take a look at a random place in Europe, Australia, for example. You see them so called white people over there in all Australia. These people really think those are the real Australians. No, the British went over there and colonized that place. The real authentic Australians are Japhites, brown skinned people with woolly hair. But them Edomites are on the forefront. It's because they went over there. And of course, the culture of the so called white men is to what? Rape, rob, and pillage. You see what I'm saying? So that pale horse is talking about the so-called white man. He he is he is deaf. Anywhere he goes, just know that death is going to be there. Go ahead. Come. It says, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth mm -hmm. to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. You see that? Over the, he had power over the fourth part of the earth, which the fourth part is dealing with America. We can easily look that up. Let's go ahead and get that. All right, look at this. The fourth part of the world. It's a book. Go, let me go to the images. The fourth part of the world, the new world, dealing with America. But the Bible, hey, brother, but the Bible ain't real. Mm. <laughs> the scriptures talk about the fourth part of the earth. And here we have it. We can look up the fourth part of the world, right? And America pops up. But I thought that the Bible was fake. The Bible prophesied about America. See, look at that. The fourth part of the world may refer to the new world, also called the fourth part of the world. See that? Right there. And King Solomon, he used to send his navy over here for exotic animals. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and, and, and grab it. What's that? First Kings. Let me just type in Ophir. I know it was in First Kings. Yeah, here we go. Yep. First Kings chapter 10. And we're going to get back to the video. Yeah, first King chapter 10. And let's start at verse. Let's start at verse 11. Gone. First Kings 10, verse 11. It says, In the navy also of Hiram. Right. Uh Hiram, which Hiram, he was a Canaanite, right? And King Solomon utilized his men as his own navy to go over to America, which by the way, which by the way, it would take them three years in total to go to America and back. Now, why do I say that? I say that because when you read in 2nd Ezra 13, it says that it took the Northern Kingdom a year and a half to get to Arshareth. What is a year and a half plus a year and a half? That's roughly three years. Again, validating the Bible. Again, validating the scriptures. The scriptures cohesively go with one another. But keep going, Ot. 
that brought gold from Ophir. It says, brought it in from Ophir, great plenty of almost trees and precious stones. And you know, so you know, so funny about this. I did a video on this years ago, right? And archaeologists say that King Solomon gold mine, the gold came from Peru. Mm -hmm. King Solomon gold mine, it came from Peru. Now, how the hell did Solomon get gold from Peru? Mm -hmm. Peru, that's the new world. That's a part of the Americas, right? How did he get that? Because of his Navy. His Navy came over here, got the a gold, or well, it says that, and the Navy also of Hiram that brought gold from Ophir. They bought the gold from Ophir and brought it back. Also, you had Egyptian mummies. They were found cocaine within their system. Now, cocaine plant is only grown over here or was only grown over here in America. How did they get that? Because people were coming over here. They weren't living here, but people were coming over here. See what I'm saying? So that goes back to why Esau, the so-called white man, has to just go around the earth, rape, robbing, rape, robbing, and, and pillaging. Because all the rest of the places of the earth, all the rest of the landmass of the earth have natural resources except for his land. And that goes all the way back to the curse of to the curse of Cain and then Esau, right? Because Esau's blessing is really a curse, right? That's how we know in the book of Genesis 27 that us and Esau didn't get the same blessing. Don't know why the King James translated it like that, right? But we read it in the Hebrew and when you go into different translations, it really, it really means that Esau's dwelling shall be away from the, uh, away from the, away from the fatness of the earth, away from it. He's going to get the crappiest lands. Hence why he has Europe, which has no natural, which has no natural resources, which is why he has to go around and rob people of their natural resources. So that's what it means by the bottomless pit. It's because Europe lacks natural resources while everywhere else starting with africa look at that it has a bunch of natural a bunch of natural resources all right so boom so now we got that let's start let's start let's start at the top again not okay revelation nine verse one and the fifth angel sounded and i saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth Mm -hmm. was given the key of the bottomless pit uh -huh. and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit mm -hmm. as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit right why is that because it would just it would just smoke everywhere in europe because of the because of all the uh gunshots right because of all the war that was going on look at that none but nothing but black smoke nothing but smoke everywhere right just just look at that just black just black smoke everywhere because of all the killing because of all the warfare that was going on in europe that's why it was just black everywhere it was just black and and, and nothing but smoke right if you take a look at look at that if you took a, if you took if you if you take a look at any documentaries of World War One, it's just always foggy and black. It's just always foggy and black. Because of all the gunfires that were just being shot from the from the planes. Look at that. See? This is actually a great one. Oh man. Oh wait, here we go. No, that ain't it. Yeah, let me just go back. Y'all can see it. Hey, you see it good op? Is it is it is it, is it cool? Yep. Calm. Yep. yep, yep. See that? Nothing but smoke everywhere. So that's why it says at verse two. 
That's why it says in verse two that, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. What's the pit? Europe, because that's where this war was fought at. It was fought. It was fought in Europe, right? Since as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason, by reason of the smoke of the of the pit, because of, because of all the warfare that was going on in World War One, it was black smoke everywhere, right? Keep going. Kind of says verse three. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have. Wow, power. you had we had gigantic locusts and scorpions out on the earth, <laughs> just just eating people up, <laughs> going around stinging people. You know, it's a funny like right before I came into the truth, I was listening to the book of Re Revelation, right? And of course, you know, I was a Christian. I was like, wow, the end days is really gonna be crazy. We're gonna have it's gonna be it's gonna be locusts on the earth and whatnot, just eating people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that's what I was thinking. Right before coming into the truth and getting and actually getting the understanding of what this was talking what about what this is talking about, I generally thought that man, the last days, the minute great tribulation, it's gonna be crazy. Going to have scorpions just roaming around the earth, <laughs> devouring people. Yeah, yeah. The dragons with seven heads. <laughs> right? But no, nah, so you have to understand that all the prophets, right? All the prophets in the, in the ancient world, when they were receiving these visions and when they were writing it down, they had to describe they had to utilize the words or terms that was common at that time to describe what they were seeing in the vision. Like, for example, you read in the book of Isaiah, Psalms, Ezra, <clears throat> the missiles are likened unto what? Likened unto arrows. There was no such thing as the word missile back then in the ancient world. So when Ezra Isaiah, Jeremiah, when they were seeing these, you know, uh, when uh, they were seeing these missiles in the vision flying from one end to the earth to the other, they like, damn, it kind of it kind of looked like an arrow. And that was the only thing at that time that could go from one to, to point A to point B long distance. So they had to so they had to utilize the word arrow. But here we are in this time. We know that all right, this can't be talking about a real arrow because a real arrow can't do that much damage. Number one, and number two, a real arrow can't come from Russia all the way to America and just create fire everywhere. So, this has to be talking about something else. It's talking about the missiles. Likewise, here in Revelation chapter nine, the locusts, when it says, and there came out smoke from the locusts upon the earth. And was giving them power. That's talking about the dogfighter jet planes that was utilized in the war. All right, which we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. We're going to go ahead and take a look at these at these planes. And when you and when you take a look at it, you will say like, "Damn! Like it kind of does look like a locust." Go ahead and take a look at it. Just like a missile. Like when you like when you take a look at a missile, it actually looks like an arrow. So just imagine hundreds, thousands of these in the air. It's gonna look like a miss, uh, it's gonna look like locusts. Mm -hmm. Locusts. Look at that, bro. So you telling me, you telling me, look at that, bro. Especially this one. This one. Look at that. Yeah. That actually looked like the dogfighter jet planes. Huh. Let me see. In air. Look at that. Mm. That's on point. <laughs> yeah. That is on point, bro. 
and I'm not being biased, bro. That January looks like this, bro. You see? But the Bible is just fake, right? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was written by the white man. Right, the Bible doesn't know what it's talking about. The Bible has error, blah, 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 right? But the Bible isn't the book of the Most High. The word of God is just wrong. You people are you people, you, you, you people are crazy. Like this is like beautiful. Beautifully described by John the Revelator. Read verse three again. Ah. It says, verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, mm -hmm. and unto them was given power, as mm -hmm. scorpions of the earth have power. Yeah, as the scorpions of the earth have power, and the scorpions of the earth are dealing with the soldiers shooting shooting from the end, the tail end of those planes. Because where do scorpions have their power? The main source of power of scorpions are in their tail. So on these planes, you will see two men, one, one man that's flying and one man that's actually shooting out of these planes. And that's the power, the gun on um, 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 the gun of uh, fire that were coming out that, that were coming out of the tail end of the planes. Let me see. Shooting. All right, look at that. Look at that. See that? Boom. Right up here. You have one man driving, one man shooting. Nigga doing a uh, damn uh, drive-by in the air. <laughs> he doing the air. He doing the air. Uh, uh, air by. Look at that. All right, we also got footages. Fair use, fair use. Hopefully they don't strike this. We'll give this a copyright. Let's go ahead and take a look at this video real quick. See, look at that. You see that, bro? Come. One person in the driver's seat and one person in the back, the tail end. About to shoot. Yeah, see? He getting the Draco out. See? Look at that. Yep. That's what he's doing. This is what John the Revelator saw. He's seen this. Just want to show more of the visual, and then we'll get back to it. Let's take, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at it flying. That's that, that's that locust that John saw. Had the wings and everything. All right, cool. So boom. So now let's go back to it and let's read verse three again. Come. It says, there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Read on. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither mm -hmm. any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Right. It says, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And who is that? 
in reference to that's some of the Israelites. Okay. Now, when you go, when you look it up, right, how many blacks died in World War One? Look at this. According to the Library of Congress, around 770 African American soldiers were killed in World War One. Watch this though. Out of an estimated 40 to 50,000 who saw combat. This okay. number accounts for less than 2% of the 52,947 battlef battlefield deaths suffered by the American expeditionary force in France during the war. Look at that, bro. So <laughs> out of out of out of 50,000 Israelites, only 2% died, bro. And those 2% was probably tears. Yeah, exactly. Right? Absolutely. So, so-called black people barely died during World War I. So that's what verse 4 is talking about. Those that those that had the seal of the Most High. Because, by, because us being Israelites, whether you're in the truth or not, by default, you know, you're going to have the seal of the Most High in you. Because you're an Israelite. The most side barely had any of our people die during during that war. None but Edomites died. All praises to the Heavenly Father. Okay, so that's what that's talking about. Let's read that again. Not God. It says verse four, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads, and which. Which we don't have to go to other precepts to prove that grass, that grass, green thing or tree is in reference to men, because in the same verse, it says, but only those men which have not the seal of the most high in their foreheads, showing you that this verse is alluding to grass or any green thing or tree as men. But just to have another witness, let's read this really quick. Mark 8 and verse 24, something simple. It says, Mark 8, verse 24, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. See that? I see men as trees walking, and I believe that's red letter too, right? So out of all the men that died, apparently any Israelites died. That's beautiful. Hey, because really, we weren't even supposed to be fighting that war anyway, right? right? Fighting some white man's war, right? We have nothing to do with it. So the most I was like, all right, bet. I'm just, I'm just going, I'm just not going to have a lot of Israelites die in that war. It's beautiful, which is again showing you that what that this Bible is real. Or you can easily just look. I, bro, all I did was type in. All, all I did was type in. I, I just typed this in. How many blacks died in World War One? And boom, this popped up, showing you that this is true. All right, so cool. So now let's go ahead and read verse 5. Verse 5, it says, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, mm -hmm. but that they should be tormented five months. Mm -hmm. the torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Yeah, right, because it says five months, but we know how the scriptures deal when it comes to months, years, and days, right? In this context, in this instance, Right, the five months, the five months is talking about five years because that's how long World War One lasted. World War One lasted five years, right? Now it says that, but that they should be tormented five months. That's dealing with the effects of World of World War One, right? You had all these soldiers. Matter of fact, let's read verse six real quick. Verse six. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. Mm -hmm. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. Right. They shall desire to die. They will seek death and not find it. And death and death shall flee from them. Flee from them. Going back to verse five and six, because verse five and six are connected with each other. That's dealing with the effects. Again, the effects, the, the uh, aftermath of World War One. Right, you had soldiers being being shipped back home with no legs. Right, you had what was called shell shock. Right, which basically just had 
these uh, uh, uh these uh these soldiers these soldiers bugged out these soldiers were bugged out when they came back home right because of because of all the trauma because of because of all the trauma that they done experience during world war one bro just imagine seeing your your uh your uh your partner right one of one of your fellow soldiers on the field just being blown to pieces bro i'm talking about one of his uh, man his arm his leg his blood just splatter on you and whatnot hey look you probably seen somebody brain yeah imagine that somebody head somebody head just explode in your face bro like part of his brain just splatter in your face that is traumatic and matter of fact, you watch that movie Dead Presidents wasn't a uh, uh, bro. Um, what's his name? Chris Tucker. After the war, he was bugged out, right? You, mm -hmm. you seen that movie out? Dead Presidents. Yeah, I seen some of it. Yeah. Um. Uh. Chris Tucker. He was just in his apartment, just bugged out. Matter of fact, let me see if I can pull up a clip. Chris Tucker. Let me see if I can pull something up. Like Chris Tucker was just in his apartment, just bugged out. And that's how these people really were. And again, these soldiers were getting shipped with 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 no legs, just dealing with a whole bunch of trauma shell shock ptsd all right it doesn't have the clip that i want let me see chris tucker and apart apartment let me see chris tucker overdose on ai screen let me see Let me see. This is what I want. Fair use, fair use. <laughs> yep, yep. This is exactly what I wanted. See, look at that, bro. On drugs. Why? Dope up. Look at that. Look at that. Why is that? Because of because of all the trauma that he faced, all the trauma that he faced from fighting in that war. That's what that's that's what that's what caused it. See what the comments say. I just wanted to see if somebody would have said anything about the war. Yep, here we go. It says this scene always makes me so sad. Skip, skip. It says Skip just wasn't cut out for the life he had to live, so he turned to drugs. Uh, it says Dugan got shot and killed during the gun battle in Vietnam because Skip got so shook, shook up and didn't and didn't cover from him. You see that he couldn't handle all the violence in Vietnam. You see. All the violence, everything that they done had to see, killing people, bro. Just, bro. Just imagine, bro. Just imagine killing somebody. That take heart, and 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 some people actually suffer from PTSD or some type of trauma after killing somebody. Right? They get nightmares, all those things. All right, boom. So I have this video, which I'm which I'm going to play the audio. Hopefully, uh, fair use, fair use. Right, this video is going to be used for edification. This is not our video. Right, this is from the YouTube channel, The Great War, Shell Shock. Right, the psycho the psychological scars of World War One. Right, so let's go ahead and watch some of this.
Is the audio playing? What'd you say, y'all? The audio, I can't hear it. Oh, you can't hear it? Mm. Let me see. I wonder why. If you could hear it, then hopefully, um, you know, the viewers could hear it, but I can't. You can't hear it, though? Nah. Yeah. Hopefully. Right, it said men of no physical injuries, but showing medical problems. You know, I'm just I'm, I'm relaying what uh, I'm, I'm relaying what he said to you. I right. look at that. Who who the hell wouldn't want to die? Want to die? Ima ima imagine just going through that. Yeah, just just take me out, man. Yeah, bro. Um, grab that in Surah. I believe it's Surah thirty, and verse star verse like fifteen. I, I believe I believe that's what it is. Put up real quick. Let me go ahead and pull it up on the screen. Okay. Haven't read this piece up in quite a while. I think this is what I want. Is it 14, you said? So let's start at verse. Yeah, boom. Let's start at verse 15. Come. This is uh, Sirach 30 and verse 14, uh, 15. Health and good state of body are above. Oh, matter of fact. No, but no, uh, brother. That's good, actually. Yeah, actually. Let's go ahead and start verse 14. That's good. Verse 14. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution. Right. So the Bible says it's better to be poor, but have a strong body. Go ahead. Than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Yeah. Than a rich man that's afflicted in his body. What is being afflicted in your body mean? Just having all types of ailments. Right. Go ahead. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Mm -hmm. Strong body above infinite wealth. Right, so having a healthy a, a healthy body, a strong body, right, is is way better than being rich. Is what the Bible is saying. Go ahead. There is no riches above a sound body, and mm -hmm. joy above the joy of the heart. Here's the point, verse seventeen. Go ahead. It says, "Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness." See that, bro? That's why in Revelation nine it says, "Men shall seek death, and I'll find it." Because the Bible is saying death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. It is, it is better for you to be dead than to be laid up in a hospital or just laid up in your bed. Just sick. You're just suffering in your body. And you can't control it. And mind you, back then, they didn't have the technology and the medicine or the pharmaceutical drugs that they have now to heal they didn't have that so they had to deal with that that's why it says that they were being tormented because that's torment it's better that you just you you just die i bet you a lot of them just wanted to take a gun and just kill themselves right then and there God. Having, ha having having just to deal with all that right right here in the uh in, in the um what is it called Captions, it says in the war, headaches, cardiac, irrit, irrit, slot. I'm about to butcher this word. Irregularities, blindness, amnesia, depression. That's a form of sickness. Anxiety, loss of loss of appetite. That to deal with all that. Let me keep going real quick.
man, bro, just imagine walking like that in public back then. You know, it's kind of like normal now. You go down to Philadelphia, Kensington, you will see people like this, right? In the Kensington section of Philly, Philadelphia, right? You will see doped up people like this. We call it zombie land in Philly. Yeah. Yeah, so boom. So that's them being tormented. That's why they wanted to, they wanted to seek death because they were going through all that all that trauma. Again, just go ahead and put yourself in their shoes. Would you want to live? Hell no. Hell no. Going through just just going through all that trauma and pain, and again and, and the nightmares. If you if you're having continual nightmares, you can't sleep. You can't sleep. Huh. And imagine if you have no woman, you have no woman there to comfort you. You just man, you just threw. You got some hot? Um, con. Uh, if I can find, it. I know it's in Sarat twenty six or twenty five. I'm thinking about. Um, this is give me any plague. Oh, give me any plague, but the plague of the heart. Yeah, I think that's uh, dang, I think that's Sarat twenty five. Yeah, I think Sarat twenty five and. Oh, yeah. Six, is it? I, I found it. It's in uh, verse 13. Con, that's right. Con, right. 25 and 13. It says, give me any plague but the plague of the heart and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. You got it, bro. Con, so that plague of the heart, that's like the brother's bringing out. That's that's like worse. According to the scripture right there, that's worse <laughs> than having just any like physical ailment. Because if you're mm -hmm. mentally... If your heart or your mind, your laab is messed up, then that's like, that's horrible, bro. That's just like, that's torture, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. That's it? Con, con. Okay, go ahead. Right. Let's read verse 7. Con, Revelation 9, verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. Right, right. Uh huh. And in the face in the faces of men, that's just talking about the piloters that were piloting the uh, uh jets. Go ahead. It says, verse eight, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. It says, and they had hair as the hair of women. Right. That's talking about that's some of the Prussian. That's some of the Prussian uh, uh, pickle hop hat. Right, that they were wearing during that they were wearing during the war. Let me go ahead and pull it up. Right, you're gonna see, you're gonna see why John says that they had hair like woman. See, look at that. So just imagine seeing this in a vision, right? An intro, you're like, damn, like that kind of like let's just say you're walking down the street and from far distance. You see this, you're going to automatically assume that that might that 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 just might be a chick because of how because of how it is, because of how their uh, helmets are. <clears throat> so when it says that as a hair like woman is talking about uh, the spiked helmets that these soldiers or these men were wearing. Well, really, um, really like the rulers or like the higher class men, they were wearing these. Let's see if I can try to. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why I keep doing that, but hopefully, you know, y'all can see it well. Um, Zoom out just a bit. Boom. So on May two, like everything we're bringing out, like these all can't be uh, coincidence. You know, the locusts, the hair like woman. Like everything is just adding up, you know, it's just <laughs> foolproof, you know. Nah, nah, for real though, bro. For real. Like this is bro, like in my opinion, this is this is one of the coldest breakdowns in the Bible. Con, yeah. Between that and Daniel, I think. Yeah, cause this one I think got it though. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, for real, brother, because like verse for verse, you can just go ahead and look up. Like, there is no guessing. When it comes on to this, like it's just it's just 
smack dab on point. I believe I believe the most I put a spirit on Elder to heart to uh break this down. I'm not 100 percent too sure. It was either Arya or it was Elder to heart of uh GMS. But let's read, but let's read verse eight again. It says verse eight, and they had hair as the hair of woman, and mm -hmm. their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Right, and the teeth of lions are talking about the bullets, right? <clears throat> and also Matter of fact, let's read verse 9. Let's verse 9. And they had breastplates as it were the breastplates of iron. Mm -hmm. The sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Right. So, right. So when it says that, when it says that they have breastplates and a, and a breastplate of iron, as it were the breastplates of iron, that's some of the reinforcement, reinforcements of the jets, right? the iron because when you read the bible right iron and according to and, and, and according to facts you know uh, uh according to science iron is one of the toughest metals right so that's some of the reinforcement that the jets had uh that you know the men built for the jets so that so that you weren't so that you weren't easily killed right basically the protection the uh, protection of the uh, jets. That's what the breastplate is going into. And it says, and the sound of their wings were at, were, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. That's talking about how loud those planes were, right? The planes were very loud. You know, the sound of the engines of those planes was very loud. Keep going. It says verse 10. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Right. Again, again, going into those soldiers that were at the tail end of those jet, of those dog fighter jet planes, shooting from the tail of those planes on, on their on their on, on their enemy in World War One. Right. Go ahead. God. And they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Uh, uh, Apollyon, and that's, and that's again going into Kaiser Wilhelm, right? And let's go into these words real quick. Let's go into Abaddon, right? Which essentially what this verse is talking about is some of him being death, all right? Because that's what he was doing. Right, this guy was just killing people. He was just putting people to death. See that? Destruction, ruin. Again, showing you, showing you that Esau is death. See that? Abaddon, destruction, ruin. Because that's what this guy was doing. He was just killing people. Apollyon, let's go into that, which is just going to be the same thing. See that destroyer, the angel of the boundless pit, the destroyer. Because again, that's what Kaiser Wilhelm was doing. He was just destroying everything, destroying everybody. All right. Hey, but that's it. You know, Lord's will, you brothers and sisters were edified. That's World War One. Matter of fact, um, real quick, let's read, let's read verse 12 real quick. Verse 12, it says, one woe is past. One woe is past. So now World War I is gone. Go ahead. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. There come two woes more hereafter. So you have World War II. That, that, that already came and went. That's also prophesied in the Bible. And World War III, which we're on the verge of World War III. All right. So officially with that, Yahweh Tazah. Which is Lord's will, you brothers and sisters who edify. We give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, with the world called Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. Shalom.